think would be main isko powerpoint mode mein nahi dal raha hu just zoom it out a bit right so so basically what we are going to do is today in the tech session obviously it's hard to cover all aspects of tech uh but what we are going to do today is basically just have a look under the hood right ki exactly how web products app products basically work under the hood right ui ux to sabko dikhta hai but most of the programmers out there really don't understand how things work behind the scenes right so we'll just be having a good look at things behind the scenes and then i'll be showing you fair bit of live demos so that the concepts completely get instilled in your mind right so before we go there i want to basically start with this contextual sort of thing right that if i had to understand let's say how ticket booking right a flight ticket booking or a hotel ticket booking happens at make my trip how would i think about it right just starting off with the problem case so that then based on that we can further go deep into how exactly things work right <clears throat> so let's say let's start with a very simple problem right so flight booking right the first step obviously is basically you go to make my trip.com right so let's say let me go to make my trip.com right and there is a lot of data here on this website right and the first step in basically doing like a flight booking is obviously searching for a flight right even the simplest of thing right this destination picker right on this destination i am going and basically i am clicking on it and basically saying that you know what i want to do let's say a search from let's say varanasi right so i'd start up typing varanasi and automatically it is basically populating all the different options with v and maybe a few other options close to varanasi right i don't know how portblair came up ha because of that veer savarkar thing but basically we are trying to auto complete right so my question to you is how do we get the list of cities and their airport codes every time new airport codes keep getting new airports keep getting added so how do we basically dynamically refresh that list and then how do you basically things when you do a search obviously we do you we give you like a list of flight results but we also give you a fair calendar right that uh, for a particular sector let's say delhi mumbai uh, on on the calendar this is the lowest fare on each of the individual dates right so how do things like these work right what do you guys think how how does something like this work like how do you how do you get all these where is this list of cities and airport codes coming from how is it that we how do you how do we make sure that when a new airport gets added actually comes in that destination picker origin destination picker i'm able to actually add another airport right and how do i do things like fair calendar like how do, how do some how does something like this work there and, should be some back end code yes back end code yes so we sync it with the by api platforms that is maybe say we real time connect them with that mm -hmm. so fair fair calendar would be somewhat like based on the uh, backed up on the data uh, mm -hmm. on the trends usually mm -hmm. as it on the weekends it's uh, uh, basically a bit high Mm -hmm. on weekdays it's a uh, bit low so mm -hmm. that's the busiest kind of a route right right so all of you guys are kind of correct at some level so you have kind of covered it uh, correctly so let me sort of give you a quick sort of teaser right so what i'm going to do is basically open up developer tools within uh, within my browser right because if i'm going to show you tech obviously i'm going to open up developer tools right so every browser has this console which is developer tools which has a bunch of options elements network for example on chrome console versus performance right so if something is happening right something is going this so called back end right so what happens is ui is only one part right but eventually data is coming from some place right and if data is coming from some place most likely it is traveling over the internet right so basically when the website is loading it is trying to basically call some system from which data is going to come and all of that traffic is going to happen over the internet so this will be will visible in the network tab network is basically over the network right so now i've just opened it up i'm going to remove this filter that i've applied and again i'll go back i'll just remove it again and just notice what happens right so i'll start typing something so let's say in this particular case let me start typing b n 
right? Automatically, you see some activity happening over the network, right? Let me open it up, right? <clears throat> so let's say this one. So I just clicked on this one. See what happens. I'm just expanding this. So this is telling me something happened, right? So what happened? So it is when I selected this one, it tells me that there is some, if I just expand this, you can see there is some URL, right? It looks like a website URL, right? It looks like flightcb.makematrip.com slash API flight search. It looks like a URL only like any other, uh, like any other link. This is another link, right? But what is happening is in this particular case, instead of sending back a website, instead of sending back something like makematrip.com, it is maybe sending something else. What is it? What is that something else? Right? So you can see there is a URL. It says something like get, which will tell you, uh, which I will tell you later when I go further deep into this Stated, status code is 200. Okay. It's green, so which means kind of worked fine. There are a bunch of, uh, response headers in the response, which we'll ignore for now, right? The payload. So payload says that, uh, basically the query that was typed was B E right? Because it started typing Bengaluru, right? So B E region was India language was English currency was INR because I was on the INR version of the website selling me uh, limit 15. So this give me 15 results. Now, if I look at the response, this is what the response started coming in, right? So let me just quickly copy it, right? And, uh, let me maybe paste it here so that you can see it better. So something came back, right? You can clearly see something came back in the response and it is not very nicely formatted. So it looks pretty ugly. So what I'm going to do now is basically just put it into a format, right? So I'll just search for something decent formatter. put it here. I'll just paste it here, same stuff. And I'll say process. It's a fairly heavy. So, so now you can see it's neatly formatted, right? Maybe I'll just expand it so that you can have a better look at this. So you can see, right? As soon as I started typing, uh, B E there was an auto suggest API, right? Which is the URL that you saw flight cb .make .com. It started giving you certain results, right? And in the suggestions, it started giving me, okay, there is one airport that they felt matches with the search that the user did, which where the IATA code, IATA code is basically the airport code. Obviously you can see it is Bangalore. The icon is obviously a flight icon. City name is Bangalore. Airport name is Bangalore international airport, country, India, country code IN, right? Similarly, BBI again, because I started off with B, so they matched and they said, okay, Bhuvaneshwar is another possible, likely again, the same flight icon. You can see the same URL, Biju Patnak International Airport. So this is how things work behind the scenes, right? Your website or your app is typically hitting some URLs behind the scenes. Again, it's a link only, but the only difference is in this particular case, the link does not send you back a website. The link basically sends you back raw data. Why does that work? I, I sort of cover that. Just give me one second. Right. So why do you think these link? What do you think these links are? Why do they send back data and not the full website? It would be too complicated for any, uh, you know, layman to understand. Okay. It reduces the load in the system. Okay. What else? Okay. I, the I process I, would be uh, very hasty or something like that. I, I, I just give me a second. Yeah. So what is happening here is C. <clears throat> I'll, I'll just switch out of this. So you understood what is happening, right? The website, when the website is basically a lot of dynamic components, those dynamic components are basically hitting some, some links behind the scenes when you are doing some activity and those links are returning you data rather than a website, right? So the link looks exactly what I showed you, right? Which you could see flight CB dot me. So it is like any other regular link, but this link gives you data instead of a website. Now here is the thing, right? The same thing make my trip has done also on the app. 
right so if if the link would have returned you the website right it would not work in app context what is a website a website is nothing but uh some html and css hope all of you understand what html and css is html is basically the structure of the page and css is basically the formatting of the page so for example for example if i go to the elements tab so this is what the the web any website behind the scenes looks like right so it is some tags head body within body there is some content right but the data that is powering it right same information when i do on the app when i go to the flight search option right and there i type be again there also the content has to come in website also the content has to come but the content will be formatted differently in website it will be formatted very differently right a website works differently in app it will be formatted very very differently so in both cases all you need is the data you don't want the formatting because if the formatting comes in an android app the android app will say i don't know what to do with this i don't understand html why are you sending me html just give me data i will work with the data <clears throat> and then whosoever i want to format if, if i want to build an android app i will write code in android to basically consume that data and build the build the user facing view right whatever i want to build within my app all i need is the data right on the website again all i need is the data once i get the data i can format it the way i want to and i can build a desktop site i can build a mobile website right so in all of these cases the requirement is to basically get back the data and not the ui layer the presentation layer is not important the presentation layer eventually will depend on where you are building the view right if you are on a website you want to have a different view if you are on a app you want to have a different view also the way those views are built are different in website it is built on html and css in the app it is built in android on on an ios device it is built built in built in some other language right so objective c or whatever right so or swift right so all of these guys are saying ki boss give me the data don't give me any presentation presentation i will do you just give me the data and then based on the data i will be able to present it the way i want to right so this is the crux of how how any internet based product or any digital product works right behind the scenes there are urls that are being hit they are returning they are returning you data let's say i want to build a weather app i will hit a url that gives me weather data and then i will present it the way i want to present it some app will do it something differently some other app will do it something differently right so that is what is happening behind the scenes right <clears throat> So, so Anurag, this database is not maintained in MySQL type of uh, database. So, or mm -hmm. yeah. So, what is happening here is from the client, right? From the website or from the app, all they care about is I should be able to hit a link and I should be able to get that data. How that link is giving me back the data is something I don't care about. That link behind the scenes might be storing it in some SQL database. right so if i had to give you a better picture even though that is not part of my slide because but because you asked me that question actually it's in my slide also <clears throat> so let me just just give me a second i think my system got hung too many things right so here is what is happening <clears throat> the make matter website or the make matter app is saying boss give me airport codes okay and behind the scenes there is a make matter flight engine right which is basically giving back the airport code so makematrip.com makematrip app says boss give me airport codes i want only data just give me the data makematrip flight engine says great you want airport code you get the airport code right sure here they are tum le lo theek hai how makematrip flight engine eventually is giving back the airport code to mt.com or mt app they don't care they are saying we have agreed on a certain format of you returning me the airport information you please give it to me i don't care how you store it save it manage it behind the scenes i don't care about that right so everything is abstracted within the make matter flight engine right so the the website or the app does not know how the flight engine behind the scenes is basically giving back the data all they know is that this is a this is a uh, this is a link i have to hit and i'll get the information back exactly how i showed you right now in the browser right so so for them it is just a url like make matter.com/airport codes but instead of a full website it basically just returns back data 
Now behind the scenes, what make matter flight engine might be doing, and I'm just changing my slide at runtime because you asked that question. Behind the scenes, it might be uh, behind the scenes, this flight engine might be storing some data somewhere in let's say some database, right? System was slow. Okay. So empty flight engine might be storing it somewhere. Eventually it might be stored in some database, but that is known only to the empty flight engine. The app or the website does not get to know it for app or website. The source of truth is empty flight engine. A piece empty flight engine. Kya kar rahe? Kaise kar rahe? That that the app or the website does not know. All they know is that I asked for it, it gave me. What did he do behind? That is something that is visible only to the make matter flight engine, the so-called backend, right? That some guy basically used in the beginning, right? So this is how it works actually in the real world. Got it. Okay. okay. Yeah. ठीक है तो मैंने आप अनुराग वन थिंग अनुराग वन थिंग Sorry, uh, so I just want to know. Uh, so MMT flight engine is getting the data from the database. So obviously, when while fetching some you know airport codes and everything, uh, where is the origin from data? Where are we getting this data from? I'll come to that. That's a great question. That is why I knew that question will come. इसलिए मैंने end में I've kept a real demo. We'll get to that. अभी के लिए आप ऐसे मान लो कि there is MMT flight engine is getting it from some database. Who knows? It might be getting. Oh. That is just one of the options. It might be getting it from some place else altogether, right? All I right. wanted to basically illustrate in this particular case is that the the website or the app does not know where the database is. It doesn't care. Sure. Okay. And I have kept that because I knew that question will come, right? So so I have already shown you one demo, which is like the URL is getting hit, and then basically you are getting back the response, <clears throat> right? Which I formatted and basically showed you just now, right? So same screenshot I put, right? so this brings us to the core question right so what i showed you just now is basically what we call as an api right in a website or app context this is what an api means right so why is it important to learn about apis because uh, because basically these are fundamental building blocks of how software is built right be it an app be it a website right eventually All the data is coming through APIs, right? So without the APIs, without this foundational plumbing, nothing can work, right? So it's really, really important to understand how APIs work, and APIs have a much larger definition also. But because today the scope of the discussion is a website and apps, I will be covering APIs that specifically cover websites and apps, right? Uh, there is another definition of APIs in the con like this is not really a definition, but this is basically an interpretation of APIs in the context of let's say installed software, right? So, for example, if something is happening over the internet, then the narrow definition of API is that you are basically sending uh, data over internet. Uh, sorry, you are requesting a uh, URL or link over internet, and you are getting back data. But API in general means application programming interface phase, which means that. This is a way of building software. So basically, like user interface, right? Something is called user interface. What does user interface do? User interface allows you to interact with some screens, right? Physical or digital screens. Similarly, application programming interface basically allows you to interact with other software, right? If you want to use some other software's capabilities to build your own software, then you use that software's application programming interface. That interface. You can use to basically interact with that software, get that information, and use it for yourself. This is exactly what we did, right? We are hitting MT flight engine, which is like some piece of software that is able to return me airport codes, and using those airport codes, I am able to build my own piece of software, which is my own website, my own app, right? So, application programming interface is a way to interact with another software whose power you want to use. and then basically get that functionality and then use it in your software that is what an application programming interface is right <clears throat> and we'll see why why apis like what happened in the past right why did we go down the path of apis 
so the first version of internet right when internet started early, late 90s right uh, basically the websites were only static websites right there was nothing funky happening right so for example this is a this is the real website i actually pick, picked it up i actually went out there and uh, searched for what are some of the oldest websites that are still live so it turned out that 96 us presidential elections uh, I think the president and the vice president Dole and Kemp, uh, they, they basically, uh, ran for the U S presidential elections. And this website is still live. If you go to dolekemp96.org, but if you look at this website, this website is always the same, right? This website does not change. Right? For example, in the case of make my trip flight website, when you go and search Delhi, Bangalore, you get a different result. When you search Bombay, Hyderabad, you get a different result, but this website is always the same, very static, only link based. Uh, if you, every time you go to this website, it is the same. You click on a link. It is the same. And the only action you can do on this website is clicking links. There's nothing happening. It's not like you are, you are hovering on some icon and then basically something is popping up, right? Or there is basically a button that you can click, right? It is just plain, simple links, right? So this is the first version of internet, right? Static websites. Then came interactive websites. Interactive websites means that the content is always the same, but then there is some interactivity happening. So for example, in this particular case, this is again, a restaurant website, lazybeersf.com. So a restaurant website does not need to have dynamic data, right? Menus ka fixed there. Uh, they have uploaded the menu, right? There is a tasting menu or there's a full blown menu. There are maybe some images. The only thing they have is some interactivity going on, right? So basically there is, let's say these three bars on top, right? Which is the hamburger menu that all of you guys know, right? So if you click on this, it will throw up a menu option key. Here are those five things that you can basically look at, right? Or maybe there is some button, uh, below, right? So, so maybe there is a button on the side, which is like chat with us, right? So again, so these, this is interactivity, right? So maybe, uh, if you click on this, it opens up a query form and you can say, yeah, book me a reservation, right? So nothing fancy dynamic is happening. It is more interactive than dynamic, right? And obviously the final step is basically completely dynamic websites, all websites today or all apps today are dynamic, right? So make my trip, housing, booking, Yelp, uh, Flipkart, Amazon, right? Everything is dynamic. Why do I say they are dynamic and not interactive? Because the state of the world is changing, right? So for example, if you go to, let's say Zomato, right? Someone, uh, and you went to a certain sort of restaurants page, right? Someone has written a review, uh, yesterday, right? That review will now start coming up five days later, two more reviews got added, two more reviews, uh, now start coming up, right? So those they're the content itself is dynamic, right? So there are these three phases, right? Static websites, interactive websites, and dynamic websites. So now we will cover two different aspects of APIs that basically help us. So you can imagine static website, there is no fancy API happening, right? Because it is all linked, just HTML, click on a link, go to another link, click on a link, go to another link. But if you want to do something fancy, like, okay, you hover on a certain icon and something pops up, right? Or you click on a certain button and some menu comes up, right? So for that, you need some kind of programming thing happening behind the scenes, right? So that is where the first version of the API started coming in, right? And then when the dynamic stuff came in, right? Exactly the example that I showed you just now with make my trip, then obviously then you start getting uh, more full blown APIs, right? Another version of APIs where you basically hit those APIs and then you start getting data from them, right? So let's cover the interactive first, right? So how does interactivity work on websites, right? So like I said, all kinds of, all kinds of fancies, anytime you have, you have a state change, right? Which responds to users input, whether that's input coming from some form, right? Where you type Bangalore, Delhi, or you are basically hovering on something. There has to be something happening programmatically that is manipulating the content, right? So the first version, the interactivity, the way it gets powered is what, what is known as a DOM API, a document object model API, right? I'll show you some examples, right? So basically web pages is eventually HTML, which is the structure of the document and CSS to be able to manipulate websites, uh, web pages programmatically browsers have what is known as a DOM API. This is the most fundamental web API, right? Without this websites cannot be interactive. What is document object model? It basically represents the structure of the document, right? So there is some HTML, but usi HTML ko, if I have to manipulate it programmatically, then <clears throat> the browser supports an API that allows you to do it. 
So let's see some example without sort of talking more. Let me give you a simple example. Uh, because otherwise uh, it will probably not help. So this is what we'll do. So let's go back, reload this page. So now, Pichli bar, when we, I was doing the demo, I showed you the network tab. This time, what I'm showing you is basically the console tab. The console tab in developer tools allows you to write code within the browser, right? I'm just clearing this again. So I'll show you a few examples, right? So let's say I, again, I'm not expecting you to know how to write all of this thing, but I'm just showing you a few examples. So basically all of the browsers support what is known as the DOM API, right? So DOM is document object model. The top level of that is basically a document. So I started writing document here. As soon as I wrote document, you can see on the left side, all of it started getting highlighted, right? Why? Because document represents the entire page, right? If the, if the API basically says that by document, you can refer to the entire page, what the browser is trying to show you is basically highlighting the entire page and saying that, okay, this entire thing is document. Right. So that is what it is. Right. So now again, I'll just show you a few things. So you can see, I, I want to show you simple examples so that you are able to understand it. So you can see that every website has a lot of images. For example, this make matter icon, this phone icon, this my biz icon, et cetera, et cetera. There are images here also where to go trip money. Then there are images here on offers, et cetera. Right. <clears throat> so the way any image is represented in HTML. I'll just show you quickly. So I did an inspect. Uh, one second. So what I did was I went to this make matter icon. I clicked and I basically, uh, uh, right click and said inspect. As soon as I inspected, this basically showed me where this, where this uh, HTML, this particular specific component was within uh, the HTML, right? So it, it got highlighted. You can see that this is basically an image highlighted by this IMG. So basically any image on any web page is basically an image tag, IMG tag, right? So again, going back to console. So if I have to, let's say, grab all images, right? So I say document dot get all get me all elements right so get me all elements and by so get me all elements by tag name right and in tag name i say image so ideally the browser should be able to get me all images right and I'm, i will just store it in some variable right so i'll let me the variable name is image list okay so I, I basically grab I, what I'm trying to do is grab all images from this HTML by saying document dot get elements by tag name image, give me all the images and I'm storing it in image list, right? Now, if I type image list, the, when, when I type document, now, if I type image list, it is showing me all the different images out there on the page, right? I can expand this list. It's a list you can see. There are lots of images they go. So when I clicked on this one, it is highlighting this image. When I clicked on this one, it will highlight another image. See, it is already highlighting some image, another image within, uh, it actually took me there. You can see if I tap on this one, this image is getting highlighted, uh, which is like the arrow next to the explore mode, right? If I go to, uh, let's say scrolling further, if I go to nine, it is telling me that the Vistara flight icon is basically this image. Okay. So let's see. So because Dom allows me the power to basically manipulate things, right? So what I'm going to do is write more code. So let me just again, clear it. So now I know that I already have all the images in my image list and I know my ninth image is basically the Vistara flight, right? So I took that ninth image, right? And I am, what I'm doing is I'm Right now it is a Vistara flight icon. What I'm going to do is programmatically dynamically manipulate it to. So I'm changing the source and let's say just for lack of a better sort of just for having fun, let's change the Vistara icon to, let's say our Indigo icon, right? So what I've done is I've already 
downloaded an indigo icon not really downloaded but basically i have the link to an indigo icon so i'm just going to go and pick it so this is the indigo logo you can see right so is url pe indigo logo mera pada hua hai right so i already have it there i'll go back to console and i will set the source ki boss change the source to the indigo icon that is there and as soon as i did it you can see programmatically dynamically the website changed it became indigo right so this is this is document object model api right the reason why i'm teaching you document object model api is because this allows interactivity this allows you to manipulate content within your web page right so the web page came and was loaded in my browser now within my browser i can run code which is the document object model api the dom api to basically manipulate my website on the fly this is what exactly happens behind the scenes when you see things popping up when you hover or when you click on a button some uh, the drop down drops down right so all of thing those things are happening because the dom api is able to power it questions doubts confusion did you get it so this will uh, see the coding part was a bouncer though hmm. uh, but then uh, this uh, will just happen within our web page or uh, the one one thing which you did this, this will happen thing, within our web page or across the website this thing happened within the context of my web page this is only happening within my browser because i have written this code locally i have not put it on uh, i have the not main, really main deployed it right. yeah so this is happening locally but i didn't did not do anything fancy any website is a bunch of tags right any uh, any image on a website is basically an image tag which was evident from the img right which i showed you earlier right. so all i did was i said what i did was i said to my browser give me the document so document is the entire website out of these out of this give me all the elements all the elements from that uh, website that have tag name image and obviously the tag name image is for images right and then basically this i stored in something called image list right all i did was ye mujhe do and assign it to image list so, so i put it in image list then we then we then we inspected image list i found out that the ninth image was this right, this right. thing and in that. that what i did was i changed the source so source is basically how you set the source of an image right so in the source instead of whatever uh, whatever uh, content that the website has sent me instead of that i changed it to the indigo logo Right? right so as soon as i changed it to the indigo logo hit enter the indigo logo came up right so this what i'm trying to show you is basically you can the dom api allows you to programmatically manipulate website so this is one api so to speak so, so instead of image if i write down uh, if the if i change the tag to text so the written content is yes. that text or what you can you can do stuff like that also so let me show you another example uh so now uh, let me show you another example so this ct is there this is a text button okay i showed you just one image example let me show you a text example so let's say i want to change this one right so what i'm going to do is again i will have a look ki ye exactly what is this button right so it tells me that this is basically a button uh, this is an anchor tag anchor tag is basically nothing but a link and it has certain classes primary button phone 24 etc and then it says search right so what i'm going to do is let me just copy it right so let me just copy this element i'll just put it some place <clears throat> so i know that this basically this button has a specific class and these classes are primary button lato bold widget search button so ye widget search button seems like a very specific class name to ab main wapas se ja raha hu console mein and again i am doing the same thing right so i want to get access to that specific button right so what i will do is var button list equals this time instead of saying get element by tag i am saying get elements by class name why am i saying class name because here the class is set to something right and ye widget search button iska naam hai iske class ka naam hai to ab main isme Widget search button डाल दूंगा ठीक है आई पुट दिजिट सर्च बटन राइट नाउ द वे द कोड वर्क इज बेसिकली देर कुड बी मल्टीपल सच बटन विद दिस क्लास नेम तो लेट सी वॉट हैपन्स राइट 
सो आई डिड दैट सो आई असाइंड इट टू बटन लिस्ट अब मैं बटन लिस्ट को अगर जाके मैं करूँ इंस्पेक्ट करूँ सो आई नो आई हैव समथिंग आई ओनली हैव वन आइटम इन दैट एंड आई कैन सी इट इज दी सर्च बटन राइट सो नाउ आई विल रेफर दैट स्पेसिफिक आइटम ठीक है अब मुझे करना है इसका टेक्स्ट चेंज करना है लाइक एक्जैक्टली वॉट यू सर्ट राइट सो इंस्टेड ऑफ सर्च लेट से आई चेंज इट टू ठीक है चेंज हो गया राइट सो द वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू बेसिकली शो यू इज दैट एनीथिंग दैट इज इंटरक्टिव राइट एंड देर आर टू पार्ट टू इट राइट फर्स्ट पार्ट इज इंटरक्टिविटी एंड द सेकेंड पार्ट इज डायनोमिसिटी the interactivity is powered by the dom api the examples that i'm trying to show you it basically there are things that can run within your browser and you can basically define them on certain user action right uh, that okay when 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 the user hovers on a certain button change the color to red right and that thing basically is happening behind the scenes like this exactly what i'm trying to show you like you basically yeah. change the image you change the color right so what is happening behind the scenes is some code is running within the browser which is basically changing it and that is what does the interactivity right or or cl click on something and should expand right so all of those things are basically interactivity yeah. right so behind the scenes what is happening the dom api is basically being uh, the dom api is basically powering this right so okay. the reason why you covered the dom api is because if you will hear your developers use that dom api word so much that you will wonder what is dom api which is why i wanted to make this distinction very clear that interactivity dom dynamicity uh, urls that are returning you data and both are apis apis like i said is a generic concept it is application programming interface anything to do with programmatic manipulation the word api will come in but in the context of a browser it is a browser api and it is the most popular browser api which is the dom api so let's yeah, uh, uh, yeah. so like, you know, what is the difference between uh, a normal api and a rest api uh, sorry tinker can you just uh, come a little closer to your mic because your voice is a bit yes yes yeah. i was saying that you know uh, so what is the difference between a normal api and a rest api what is the difference between a normal api and a rest api a great question so api is basically like i said anything that gives you uh programmatic ma manipulation capabilities right programmatic data but the same api can be written in two or three different ways right so depending on what architecture you follow one of the ways in the older days when i used to be a developer the only way to basically write apis was what was known as a soap way of writing things which was simple object access protocol if i remember it correctly right simple ha huh? simple object access protocol so back in the days the only way to write apis was the soap way of writing it then obviously in in the tech world things keep evolving right you keep on improving stuff right so later on what happened was that people figured out that the soap way of doing things is not very good and not very efficient because the data payload is very heavy because it is all the data basically comes in xml format now i'm going in areas that i don't want to talk about but basically the so was the older way of doing things then people improved it and they said that no let's not do the so way of doing things let's let's write apis in a different way and let's call this new way of writing apis rest rest of full form a representational state transfer basically what happens is in that particular case everything is treated as a resource right so <clears throat> basically you hit a resource you get back all the content for that particular resource right so pehle soap aaya matlab in simple terms what i'm trying to tell you is sabse pehle soap aaya soap was the de facto standard of writing apis but api hoti wahi thi you basically hit something you get back the data right just that the yeah. way you you have built it behind the scenes is the soap way of doing things then people said no this is not great the data especially in that particular case the data did not used to come in the format that i showed you just now which is uh, a sum key and colon and value it used to come as xml then they said xml is too heavy way too much metadata and then the way of writing soap apis was not the greatest and convenient for the developers so they improved it and they said let's do it the rest way so rest rest is another way of basically architect uh, building apis in this particular case they change the data interchange format to basically json which is basically key value plays uh, pairs exactly what i showed you just now right so uh, 
basically what is it? D it is saying data and data can then IATA Bangalore, right? So the key is IATA and the value is Bangalore. The icon, the key name is icon and the value is this image URL. And the key name is city name and the value is Bangalore, right? So they moved from XML to basically what we know, what, what we call as JSON. Then they said rest is great. And this is actually today the de facto standard, but they have done further improvements and they're saying that, okay, rest is great, but in certain cases, the rest does not work that well. So now we have another way of writing APIs, which is known as GraphQL. And honestly, even I don't know what GraphQL, how GraphQL works. I have not gone that deep, uh, but GraphQL is another way of writing APIs and the way, the way name suggests it is a good way of writing APIs when it is a data intensive, uh, very data intensive behind the scenes, right? So for writing very data intensive APIs, then you basically resort to graph, right? So things keep improving and there are different architectural patterns in which you uh, build it behind the scenes. So basically what I'm talking about is that the MMT flight engine, the MMT flight engine might be written in rest, might be written in soap, might be written in GraphQL. But again, the app or the website does not care. They don't care whether it has been written in SOAP, whether it has been written in uh, REST, whether it has been written in GraphQL. All they care about is, boss, I ask you for data, please give me that data. Clear? Yeah, so like, you know, uh, so um, as well as the PM uh, uh, role in, into a PM role. Sorry, to... Inger, you have to come closer to your mic because your voice always breaks a lot. Yeah. Now, now it's part of it. Yeah, yeah, better. Yeah, so I was asking, like, you know, uh, so as a PM role, do we need to uh, take care of the backend data also? No, 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 no. Uh, you don't really need to know how the API architectural pattern is built, but what you do need to know is in what cases, what requests will go and what response will come back, right? Because ultimately, oh. that request and response depends on the actual user use case. Oh, right? If you're covering the different use cases, and your developer has given you an API format, which tells you that, yes, all your use cases are covered. You are fine. You don't really need to care about behind the scenes, whether they have used so, whether they have used rest, whether they have used GraphQL, that is something that you don't need to care about. Oh, thank you. Okay. So let's, let's talk about other web APIs, right? So the browser is becoming more and more powerful behind, uh, with time, right? And so they now support a lot of other APIs. DOM was the first foundational sort of web API that was, uh, that was available in the browsers. But as you can see, as more devices, so back then, let's say mobile phones, when smartphones were not there, so you did not need a screen orientation API, right? With now devices coming and portrait landscape, the browsers have started supporting screen orientation API. Then they now have sensor APIs because your phone device has, has a lot of sensors, right? This is a storage API. Uh, in, uh, Bluetooth came in as a uh, data interchange protocol. And so the browser started supporting Bluetooth API, right? So as browsers have become more and more capable, new and new programmatic APIs are coming in, right? And these are all supported by the browser, by the browser. Hence, these are called web APIs. Typically written in JavaScript, so the language I use here, to basically show you a few examples within the browser is all JavaScript code, but it could be written in something else also. There are ways to basically write it in some other language, but typically like you use like 99.99% of the cases you use JavaScript. So if, if the code example basically went uh, like a bouncer, basically you need to spend some time understanding what JavaScript is. And then all of this will become even more clear to you. Right? So obviously I cannot give you <laughs> an intro to Java and intro to JavaScript today. We have limited time. So that's, that's why I'm kind of moving like this. So let's move further, right? So we spoke about interactive websites and now we have spoken about dynamic websites. So what, what dynamic websites, like I said, any modern website today is a dynamic website. What is happening is, <clears throat> uh, basically a lot of dynamic data is coming in on the flight, right? Like I said, Delhi, Bangalore, a different set of flights, uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad, a different set of flights, right? So what is happening is browser is basically sending the request and behind the scenes, your basically server in this case, for example, the empty flight engine or some other server is basically sending you back the data, right? So in older world, when the, when, uh, apps were not there, right? There were only browsers and websites who did not have apps. What used to happen was browser would say, boss, give me, uh, give me information. And the server would say, okay, you understand HTML, no problem. So I'll send you the entire data. I'll also send you the formatting also. You basically get the final HTML and you show it, right? 
browser would just take that decimal, show it nicely, right? But then what happened? Smartphones came in and apps came in and, and then the problem started happening, right? And then they said, then the app said, okay, uh, web server, MD flight engine, give me the data. Now the web server is like, what do I send, right? Because this guy does not understand HTML, right? He only needs data, right? So that is why the, the stack evolved, right? So in the older days, when websites were written, even if they were dynamic, the data and the formatting, the entire website used to come pre-created and then basically sent to the browser. But then as more, more clients came in, so browser came, then app came, then smartphone devices came. Then, uh, then, then what st the problem started happening that if you send me the formatting, the entire HTML, then I cannot basically work with it because I only need the data. My UI will be written in Android. So then the, uh, then the webs, then the entire architecture, then the entire way of building websites started changing. And then they realized the right way of doing things is you basically send only the raw data and then whosoever wants to build the UI will do their UI in their own way. The website guy will do his UI in his own way. The app guy will do his UI in his own way. The, 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 the engine or the web server will only send back raw data. There was another reason why it happened. The other reason was, and this is what, uh, this is what the question was originally that empty.com requests empty web server, empty web server says, okay, uh, let me send you the data, right? Actually, this should be called data, not website. Let me just change it so that I don't confuse you. Right. So what happened? I, 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 I talked to MT flight engine and I said, send me back the data and MT flight engine gave me the data, but I don't know where the data came from. Right. It could have come from anywhere. Now, if you think about it very, very deeply, the MT flights engine also does not have the data on its own. Right. We are not make my trip is not a flights company. Make my trip is an online travel booking company. It is not a flights company. It does not have the air, like it will not have all the airport port information on its own. It will not have all the flight information on its own. Where is it getting the airport port and flight information from that they're getting from another third party engine. In this particular case, it is a GDS, right? It's a global distribution system. That's a terminology that is used in the online travel world. One of the GDSs in the world out there is called Amadeus. There are other GDSs also, there is travel port, right? So what is happening is when makematrip.com is asking to MT flight engine or the MT web server that give me the data, it is calling the server and saying, give me the data. So MT web server is giving the data. The, the MT.com does not get to know ki kahan se hai. They don't really know where it is coming from, but MT web server, the way, what it is doing is behind the scenes, it is hitting MDS, MDS engine. And MDS engine is actually returning back the airport code, right? And then once it gets back the airport port, then it forwards it to MT.com. So in this particular case, also the requirement is to only get back the data, right? The MT web server again to the MDS web server is saying, hey, boss, I just need only the data. I don't want you to send me any HTML, any CSS, any formatting. I'm, I don't require a website. All I need is just give me all the airport ports and then I'll forward it to my website, right? So in this particular case, also what is happening is one one server or one software is talking to another software, which is what, how I originally def defined APIs, right? My software, which is MT flight engine or MT web server is talking to MDS software or MDS web server and basically talking and get, basically requesting something and getting back some information, right? And so what is happening is MT flight engine is able to use MDS functionality to basically deliver data back to MT website, right? So this is software one empty uh, flight engine or empty web server. This is software to MDS engine or MDS web server and empty server is empty software is able to use MDS software to basically power its own functionality, which is online travel booking, right? So this is what an API really is. So because of these different reasons, we moved from that individual world where originally the websites used to be one monolithic piece data and formatting together. Later on, what happened the data and formatting were separated data became one part of it. And the formatting was left to the individual sort of, uh, final sort of destination. So website would do its own way. App will do its own way. Beach mein one software is only talking to another set software and getting the relevant bits clear.
Yes, no, can't say. Hi, Anurag, one question here. So, yeah. so question is that uh, if I am facing a technical round for a product manager and I don't understand the backend coding and anything, but I only understand the block diagrams that you just showed. So yes. will I clear that round? That is good enough for you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is MNDS web server? So uh, I'll show you an example, but basically you understood the problem, right? So make my trip is not a flights company, right? So we don't have all the airport ports. Yeah, yeah, this. So make is asking the MT engine to send the airport port, but MT engine itself is talking to another piece of software to get back the airport ports, right? And that software is Amadeus. And I'll just show you what Amadeus is. So, yeah. Yeah, is it an authorized, uh, like, you know, government or uh, something? Uh, piece of code which can uh, become the airport code. Yeah. So what happens is uh, the way of flight booking evolved is basically what is known as a global distribution system. You can read about it more, but basically there are a lot of companies out there that basically do this job of aggregating all the flight information, all the airport information, and then basically provide it as a service to other companies who want to use this to build their own products. Right. So what did, uh, what did, uh, what did companies like Expedia booking or make my trip do? They said, Ki boss, I am not going to do the aggregation business, right? The aggregation business is basically the GDS business, the global distribution system business, right? So there is some company out there that basically is talking to all airlines and basically all airports and aggregating all the airport ports and all the flight information, right? And then they're exposing it as an API to other companies. So they have exposed it as an API, then make my trip comes in and it says, okay, you already have it, have it as an API. I'm going to use your API. And then basically using that, I'm going to build my own website and apps, right? So that is known as a global distribution system. If you go to Google search and just do global distribution system airlines, you will come across this link and you can see multiple GDS is out there. So Sabre is one such company. Amadeus is another such company. Travelport is another company. So there is not just one GDS out there in the world. There are multiple companies that are in this business. So now I'm specifically searching for Amadeus. So you can see Amadeus IT group is a major Spanish IT provider for the global travel and tourism industry. What they do is basically they are a listed company. As you can see what I showed you just now, they are in the global, uh, they are basically in the business of providing travel APIs. They aggregate flights, hotels activities, whatnot, right? So they are in this business. They build these, do the aggregation part, build these APIs out so that other companies can basically build their products on top of it, right? Okay. So if you go to, let's say Amadeus website or, but just still, let me show you now that we are already on this topic. So I already created a test account to show you certain examples. So you can see, uh, which so you can see if I go to their products, you can see that they provide APIs for air ticket, air ticketing. They pro provide APIs for hotels. They provide APIs for tours, attractions, and location information. They have some personalization features. Now with when COVID came in, they basically built this travel restrictions API also, right? So this is how, so there are companies out there that are in this business. This is a B2B business, right? where they're doing the job of aggregation, partnering with individual airlines, airports, uh, COVID information providers, hotel, hotel owner, hotel owners, or other partners. And then they're building APIs on top of it. Someone like make Metrop is using these APIs, building their flight engine, using these APIs, building their hotel engine. So through APIs, they are just giving an access to their database. Is it right to say, uh, you're talking about Amadeus or you're talking about make Metrop? Yeah. No, MDS, because MDS has created a database. No, so right. they are provide they're not just providing access to their database, they're also providing you stuff like ticketing, right? Okay. Right? Ticketing, the way ticketing works is you are actively blocking some some inventory at runtime, right? And then you are generating an itinerary and then you're generating a uh, then you are sending out a BNR and voucher, right? So it's okay. not just so yes, if you talk about the informational aspects that I search for Delhi, Bangalore, and got the list of flights, then that is obviously access to the database. 
but then on top of it there is a transaction component to it right which is the ticketing component okay. right anurag yes so uh, like okay uh, book uh, this travel and hospitality industry has amadeus and other gds system mm -hmm. so what about other industry so every industry has a uh, you know gds system or what? for example if i talk about healthcare or you know other company other okay. in industry great question uh mai isliye na zyada ghusta nahi hu because i know the content of this session is probably like five sessions but the question is wonderful so let me just answer that question see uh in some cases make my trip can behave like mds right in some cases make my trip can just say ki boss there is already a company out there that has done all the hard work so let me just rely on that company's apis to build my own products right so for example i airlines ke case mein they knew that amadeus amadeus these companies are really old and uh, if you go to the history of airline ticketing right it is wonderful right if you should read about it so first there came certain terminal based booking systems and then they realized all the airlines came together and figured out ki they need a way to basically expose their inventory programmatically to other companies for uh, digital bookings right so then they came together right and they built a consortium and they built these apis out right and the first company that came out i think uh, if i am not ha huh, i'm i'm correct the first company that came out was saber and then saber came out and built a very large business then other companies also kind of came in and figured out that this is a great opportunity they started building systems in their own market right so saber was actually an american gds they used to sort of aggregate all the american airlines right ab aisa socho think of it this way right so in some cases there are already certain partners that have done this hard work in some cases there are no partners out there who have done this hard work so giving you again the make my trip example for example domestic hotels in india make my trip if make my trip has to offer hotel booking in india and that to indian domestic hotels there is no gds provider out there that basically has aggregated domestic hotels in india indian hotels at scale so what does make my trip do make my trip in that case says that boss i will be the amadeus of dom indian hotels right so make my trip actually goes out there builds a system where hotel partners can basically put their information they can put their hotel images they can put, put their hotel description they can put their inventory information right so that directly goes into the make my trip database right and then once it is available in the make my trip database then make my trip builds its own apis on top of that and then basically gives it right either internally to its own website and app or they can give it externally also right so they can give it to let's say some other company let's say booking.com is interested in offering indian hotels to its customers right so make my trip has already put in the hard work they have aggregated all the hotels <clears throat> booking.com comes to make my trip says boss i want to offer indian hotel booking i will give you some money for that make my trip offers its apis to booking.com right so you can you can be a consumer or you can yourself start behaving like amadeus nothing is stopping you from that right there is a technical way of achieving that also clear got it got it got it <clears throat> so uh, anurag uh, just one question here yeah. uh, in the in the previous scenario as you have highlighted that uh, whenever uh, api goes back to the web server they used to send back the website so it used yes. to contain both both the data and the formatting yes. but in the recent scenario uh, we could see only data is being sent so yes. what about the formatting so will it be a different api for the formatting ah, great question so the way that formatting works is basically browsers have become so powerful so what happens is uh, the dom api that i showed you just now right so what uh, what basically the web server does is also sends back certain scripts not only does it send the uh, the data the web server is sending back the data and plus that it is also sending some uh, code code right and that code is running running within your browser at run time right whatever code i wrote just now here right stuff like this right whatever code i was writing here so what happens is in that particular box what is happening is in this case request a url you get the data let me write it very clearly so you get the data in the new world you are not getting any markup formatting all you are getting back is basically scripts and scripts plus some some you can just think of it like scripts right so what is happening is data data came back and scripts came back right now scripts at runtime will execute within your browser right 
this kind of code will execute within your browser and then basically take the data, mangle it and present it in the view that it wants to. So uh, developers would have a control on this. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. So you get back data and some code. You don't get back the final markup or the final HTML. The code then takes the data within the browser, uh, accesses it, manipulates it, mangles it, and then eventually presents the view that you that eventually needs to be presented. And the developer has full control on this because the packet of data that it's being sent back is completely controlled by the developer. Okay. Okay. So, which is where the DOM, DOM APIs also play a role in the Yes, yes. Which is why the DOM APIs are very, very important. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Anurag. Anurag, just one last question. So, yeah. I missed a bit, uh, uh, you know, in between. So, what is the difference between interactive and dynamic uh, websites? The difference between... Are these two same? I'll, I'll tell you. <clears throat> So this is the website I just showed you on my slide, right? If you look at this website, yes. the content is always the same, right? But then there are certain things it allows you to do. It allows you to put in an email address and subscribe. It allows you things like if you click on this, something will come up, right? But whatever comes up is always the same. It does not change, but you are able to click on certain buttons, open, close certain stuff, right? Uh, type something here and click subscribe. Right. So this is what is interactivity, right? Because you are able to do certain things that can be done only because when, once you click on it, the browser need, there has to be some programmatic element that allows you to basically click and expand something like this, right? Show something like this, the view, the view that you're seeing on, uh, on your browser is changing, right? But the content is always the same. Every time I click on this button, the same content comes up. Right. So this is interactivity because the fact that the view is changing within your website, when you button click or you hover on something is again happening programmatically only that cannot happen if there is no programmatic linking. Right. But every time you do, you get the same result. Right. So this is okay. interactivity, but dynamicity is this, I went there and I type here New Delhi Bangalore. Okay. And I did a search. Now dynamicity is I got this flight Indigo 62131 New Delhi to Bangalore, right? Because I did New Delhi to Bangalore. The data points that came back to me are different. Then I got go first, which is G8713. Now instead of New Delhi Bangalore, if I do Mumbai Bangalore, Obviously the, the content is changing, right? The flight options that are being shown to you is changing. Right. right? So this is dynamicity. The content itself is changing, not just the view. The content is also changing. Okay. Okay. Uh, so like, uh, so let me continue. So basically APIs, like I said, are becoming more and more important. Like they keep saying it's an API economy now. There's a nice resource called programmableweb.com that basically lists all the APIs that are out there. It's a pretty nice resource. You can basically look at it. So Google Maps API, Twitter API, YouTube API, et cetera, et cetera. And given this list, I wanted to show you. So I already showed you the make matter API, but now I wanted to show you some uh, absolutely third party APIs, right? So that you guys don't feel that, you know what, Anurag make matter. So he showed only make matter, right? So let me show you a YouTube API. So again, a quick demo. <clears throat> so basically, as you can imagine, this is not YouTube website. This is YouTube's API. So what YouTube's API does exactly what you might have imagined. You hit a URL, you get back the data, right? So this is the YouTube developers.google.com YouTube API data API, right? So within data API, there are different sort of options, right? Uh, so you can, uh, you can get comments information. You can get channels information. Uh, I don't know. You can get region information, language information, who all are members of a particular channel playlist, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to look at the search API to start with because search is easy, right? 
you're basically typing something in the brow uh, in 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 the YouTube search box, and then basically you get a list of different options, videos, or whatever, right? So <clears throat> before that, the API reference documentation it tells you that every request must must have an API key. Why? Because you don't want any Tom, Dick, and Harry to basically come and hit your API, right? You basically have some kind of authentication going on. Even before you can hit something, you can hit an API. There is a way to basically authenticate your request. Typically, you do it via a key, a unique key, right? So they have said your API key is available in the developer's console. So I created a developer account. Okay, so this is my developer account. Uh, you can see uh, it's already says Anurag. I signed up with a Gmail, obviously, because it's Google. I have enabled a bunch of APIs and services. Uh, so these APIs I have enabled and you can see I've already enabled YouTube data API. So there are a bunch of steps that we need to do. It's there in the documentation. And because I've enabled it in the credentials section, <clears throat> I have this API key that I have created, right? So now let's go back to the documentation, right? And let's go to search. Right. And let's go to list because we're trying to list a bunch of videos for a particular, uh, search, uh, keyword, right? So you can see there are different use cases. So search by keyword, search by location, search by live event, search my videos, search related videos. I'm going to show you a simple example by keyword, right? Because that is what you typically do. So yeah. So once I clicked on this, it is showing you that this is how you get the information from YouTube API, right? So I'm just going to copy this. <clears throat> and again, you can see it's a URL, right? So this is what I was trying to say that ultimately it's always a URL instead of, so I had already pasted it back. So it's already there. So let me just take this and you can see in the URL, they say everything else is kind of prefixed. They're saying that you can query for surfing videos and saying, pe apni key dalo. put your API key here, right? So I'm just going to take this. <clears throat> And, uh, yes, I need the API key. Sorry. So I'll just get this key from here. Right. And I'll just copy this. Right. And then I will just replace it here. Okay. And I'll just take this URL and I will hit this. So let me go and hit this in my browser. Okay. And let's hope, pray to God that this works. So it worked and it has actually given me a very nice sort of formatted result also. So basically I, what I did was I searched for surfing, uh, surfing, uh, videos. This was my key that I took. I said max users 25 and then I want the entire snippet. So let's see what, what came up. Right. So since I asked for surfing, so I got a snippet, actually I'm looking for a snippet. So I got a dreamy surfing snippet, which is in Indonesia, long board, raw toys, the raw URL is here. And then basically the thumbnail, thumbnail images are here and then channel title, which channel it is part of. And when was, when was it published? All of that information is here, right? So if I have to now build something, right? Let's say I want to build my own version of the YouTube app using the YouTube APIs. I can actually do it because YouTube is actually providing me all these APIs to basically you can see all the different surfing videos. So largest wave served, right? So, so <clears throat> you can see from the results that it has only given me surfing video, surfing videos or surfing snippets, right? So YouTube not only has given you the YouTube website, they've also built these APIs so that other developers can use this to basically build their own nice little products, right? And during that they can monetize further, right? So not only they can monetize YouTube through ads, they can also monetize YouTube via the APIs, right? Because other developers would be using these APIs, building their products. So obviously they have to pay some money to YouTube to basically use this, right? So this is the YouTube API. Clear? Similar example, very similar to make metro, right? Nothing fancy happening. <clears throat> Clear, right? Yes. yes. Right. So let's look at another example. So this is the Amadeus example, right? Because I showed you that Amadeus example. So I just wanted to sort of complete the loop. So make my trip web server getting data from Amadeus, right? So let me quickly show you the Amadeus example also, and I'll show you how it is slightly different. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
so so once you log in into developers.amds.com which is what i did i basically created my own account right uh, and then basically they are saying that okay we have all these apis we have airport routes airline routes flight offers search flight offers price etc etc they have so many different apis right and then they have this nice little section called api references and examples so i went to api references and examples <clears throat> oh, I think I'm signed out. Let me sign. Out. Oh my God, they are already. I have to cover the analytics part also. Care हो जाएगा. Fight नहीं है फिर वाला लंबा चलेगा. Okay, so I I had clicked on that documentation and I ended up on this, right? So they are saying that this is the URL that you have to hit. You have to hit it using HTTPS. This is the final sort of URL that you need to do. And it says returns list of flights based on posted searching criteria, right? So let me just click on this and see what they are saying, right? So they're giving me all the different details. So they're saying that, okay, you can hit this URL. You can hit this final sort of thing. And then basically here is what you need to pass in the request, right? So in this case, for example, they are saying origin is Rio, Rio de Janeiro and, uh, sorry, within Rio, ha, so within Rio, there is, okay. So they're giving two, they're saying within Rio and mad and then return flight also, right? So the origin and destination are Rio and mad, mad. I don't know what airport code this is. MAD. Oh, Madrid. Okay, fine. Sorry. Yeah. So they're saying if you want to find flights between Rio and Madrid, right? Uh, so this is what you can do. Uh, their currency code, you can get the uh, you can get the flight fare information, US dollar in INR or whatever, right? You can do stuff like that. And then uh, one adult and one child. Right. And then how many results, et cetera, et cetera. Do you want business? Do you want all segments, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I'll just quickly show you the example now. Right. So sabse pehle main kya So here is where it gets a little tricky. I hidden one small detail from you, which is not all URLs can be hit from the browser. So a lot of the URLs I've showed you were actually from the browser, but HTTP, sometimes you have to send sensitive information. And if you send it via the browser, it will be visible in the address bar, right? So uh, ultimately everything is an HTTP protocol, right? The web protocol. Just give me a sec. I'll just put my video off. Sure. So what HTTP does when you have to pass sensitive information, uh, you cannot hit it directly from the browser. There is a specific way of doing it. I will just show you that information. Just one sec. Right. So the way to do that is basically use an API client, right? So again, this is some new piece of information that I'm introducing. Unfortunately, can't avoid it. So basically what I meant to say was there are some ways where you can hit the URL directly, which is called an HTTP get, but in some cases you cannot hit it because, uh, the information is visible in the address bar, right? And sensitive information cannot be sent in the address bar. So you have to do it in a different manner. So I'm just showing you one example. So I have this, <clears throat> I have this piece of software installed called advanced rest client. You just click on this. You can just go to Google and uh, download it. Right. So now I'll use the exact structure that this guy tells me, right? So test, so they're saying base URL is test API dot MDS, right? So I'll just copy it. Okay. Right. Let me clear it. <clears throat> so it was URL ke bagel mein likha tha post. So I'll just do post. 
go back to the documentation, the URL said post. It said shopping base URL ke baad, shopping slash flight offers. So we'll just do that shopping slash flight offers, right? And it is clearly written post. So I'm going to use post in this. Okay. What did I do? Okay. <clears throat> One second. अभी तो वो दिख रहा था जेसन पीलोड वो कहाँ गया भैया हाँ वही तो मैं सोच रहा हूँ now I will take this right <clears throat> so I wanted the flights between Rio de Janeiro and Madrid right so what I will do is I'll put it within the uh body double slash after the v2 sorry what are you saying no uh yeah i'm saying they like you know after the uh, v2 in the, the next one in the next one yeah yeah so what i did was this v2. is the base url until v2 and then the complete url is slash slop, shopping slash flight offer so what i did was yeah. i what? I put the base URL. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, I, and then after that, I had to put shopping slash flight offers, right? So that completes my URL. They are saying that the verb that you have to use is HTTP post. So within the method, I'm using HTTP post. Okay. So I have to go back to post. And then they are saying that within, when you are passing the information within the body, you have to give this information, this Jason, right? Uh, like Jason can come in re response. Jason can go in request also. So this request, like I showed you, is basically giving you flights between Rio and Madrid in US dollars, right? So I went to body and I just copy pasted that entire thing, right? And then basically, what I'm trying to do here now is basically, I hope you can see it. I will do a send and see what happens. And what happened? It said 401 unauthorized. Why? Because I did not like similar to the YouTube API where I put in the API key. I did not bother to put in the authorization header, right? Like I showed you every API has some authentication mechanisms, right? So I have to now put the API header in there. So let's go back. So what does the error say? The error says you have not put in the HTTP header. So we'll go back to the headers tab, right? And then we have to start putting the header. So let's see what header we have to put. So header information, how will I get? Uh, so they have said you read our authorization guide, right? So let's read the authorization guide just quickly. <clears throat> So they're saying for getting the header, you have to post to this token. And then basically there you have to basically use client credentials, client ID, client secret. And then eventually in that you will get your access token, right? So I had already done that so that I could save some time. So let me show you that. I think this is the API. Correct. Yes, V1 security auth token. So I had already done that. And now I have to do this, right? Grant type client credentials. So I'll do that. Once. Let me clear this. Making me confused now. Okay. 
then basically parameters. So I have to first use content type. Oops, sorry. Okay. This is the only header that is required, right? And then <clears throat> so three parameters one is grant type let me just type it down so grant type is client credentials i'll just copy it Then I have another parameter called client ID. So I put the client ID and the value has to be the actual client ID, right? So I will copy my API key, which is what we did last time also. And then I will add another parameter, which is the last one, which is client secret, right? So go back, put client secret, and then client secret value is from my API secret, right? Okay, done. So we have done the exact same thing. We are now hitting the authorization URL, getting the access token. Once we have the access code token, then we'll put it in the uh, flight results wala URL and then we'll do it, right? So now let's do a send. <clears throat> and it worked fine. You can see this time I got a 200 okay and it sent me the access token back. Right. This is the access token I needed. Without this access token, I cannot hit the API. So I'll quickly copy it. Right. Somewhere. And then go back to the original one that we were trying to do, which was shopping. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in this case, we uh, put all of this information, uh, uh, Rio to Madrid, right? This is already saved. The only thing they are saying now is, if I go back to documentation, sorry, they are saying that I think it's not here, somewhere here. They're telling you that when you are hitting your flight offer, yeah, some other URL, you have to add this authorization header whose value is this bearer slash space your unique string. So I will do exactly that. So I will add another header called authorization, which is the standard header, right? And in that, what I will do is bearer space, the value that I just copied, right? The access token that we got. And if I have done this, right? So everything is set, right? My, my header has the authorization token that I just got using another API. And in the body, I'm sending Rio Madrid, everything, whatever I needed to send. So now hopefully if I do a send, what happened? Oh, yeah. So now when I did a send, now this time I did not get a 401 authorization uh, forbidden. Now I actually got 200 okay. And I got all the different results that I needed to get, right? So now you can see. So it has sent me a bunch of itineraries, right? So this is exactly how make my trip is able to use GDS, right? It is telling me that agar Rio se fly karna hai, so within Rio, there are different airports. So one of the airports is GIG, which is the ITA code for uh, GIG airport. If you go to Google, you will be able to see, you will arrive at GRU, you will start at terminal two at this time, you will arrive at GRU terminal two at this time, the carrier code is LX. Let's look at what LX is. 
So the flight is clearly LX9701, right? So let's look at LX9701. What is LX9701? So you can see this is a flight that flies from GIG to GRU, Rio de Janeiro to Sao Paulo, right? Uh, the first leg from Rio, you are going to Sao Paulo, and then from Sao Paulo, you are going to Madrid. You are starting at 350. You are arriving at five. This is basically Swiss Airlines flight, Swiss LX 970. So this is what I am also getting back in my result, right? And then you are again starting from GRU and going to Zurich. And then from Zurich, you are probably going to Madrid, right? So yeah. And then from Zurich, you are going to Madrid, right? So this is one complete itinerary, right? And it is giving me a Swiss flight, right? So this is exactly the API that uh, make my trip uses to basically get back all the flight results when it presents, presents it to you on the UI, right? So MD flight engine is hitting the MDS flight engine, getting back these results. Then these results may be doing some additional uh, information aggregation on top of it. And then, then eventually sending it back to the website or the app. And then app and the website is able to present the UI the way they are, they want to, right? So this is how the entire API thing works. Clear? So this is the last example I wanted to show you. And the only small sort of caveat here was that you cannot hit this API directly from the browser. You have to use something like this software that I'm using advanced risk client or something like a postman to do it because you are sending a lot of sensitive information, right? This stuff that you're sending here, right? So this should not show up in the, uh, in the URL parameters. Otherwise someone can intercept and see what is happening, right? Which is why you have to use a post and to be able to do a post, you need software like ARC or there are other clients also like postman, right? You can use that to basically, uh, hit these URLs and basically get back the response, right? So this is the kind of the overview of the tech side. Uh, I would like to close here at least on the tech side because we have a fair bit to cover on the analytics side also. Any questions, conclusion doubts? Yeah, uh, Anura, I have a question. The yeah. question is, suppose um, this I understood that we are talking about make my trip and the API is already built. Now, suppose let's assume that I have my own software and some you have uh, your own software. Now we want to get connected with between each other. Then that yes. how the API is built. <laughs> For that, you need to learn coding. I cannot. Okay, no, that's right. So that will be a coding, right? So which which coding it will be like? What uh, it's a language or any like? Uh, it will be on the Java platform. It can be anywhere. It can be on Python. It can be on Java. It can be on. Uh, yes, it can be on Perl. Anywhere you can write it. Right? There is a way to package. See, ultimately what you're doing is transporting data from one place to another. The way yeah. you do it can be done in any language. Python supports it. Ruby supports it. Java supports it. Even in the older times, Perl used to support it. You can do it in whatever language. The, the, the choice of tech stack is completely your own. You can decide whichever way you want to package it. But every time you package it, ultimately everything is getting transported over the internet, right? And that is using the standard HTTP protocol, right? So right. whatever you might be using behind the scenes, you might be using Java, you might be using Perl, you might be using Python. Ultimately, it will become eventually become an exposed URL, which someone can hit and get the data back. And that is how different, uh, and that, that kind of touches upon a great point that you might have one software written in Java and another software written in Python, and yet they are able to talk to each other because both are talking to each other over the internet over HTTP. Mm -hmm. So that is where this authentication codes will play a role so yes. that it is not exposed, right? Correct. Yes. <clears throat> this is how disparate software systems, which have been written in completely different tech stacks are able to talk to each other. And the way to talk to each other is APIs because everyone is eventually able to expose their functionality over the internet. Someone else can use that functionality over the internet by calling that URL and getting back stuff, right? So one system can talk to another system, even if both are written in completely different ways. Clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Was this helpful? The tech part? Yes. It's very yeah. helpful actually. Okay. Can relate actually. Okay, fine. So I think, uh, uh, I don't know. We'll have to go over time today because 